So you just purchased a shipping container, it's showing up tomorrow, and you're wondering what to put it on. Super common question. The blocking we suggest and how high off the ground we suggest depends on what you're putting it on. Are you throwing it in a farmer's field? Do you have sandy area? Do you have a perfectly packed gravel pad? Are you putting it on asphalt or are you putting it on concrete? Our suggestions vary, so stay tuned in this video. I'm gonna go over them all. Our salesman always tells people, use what you got for blocking but you need to get it up off the ground you need airflow underneath your container so that you're not wicking ground moisture up through your floorboards and into your container causing a whole bunch of condensation and container rain so here for this container we've got a chunk of two by ten under one side we've got a chunk of lvl under the other or what we commonly use in our yard here is a six by six pressure treated block that's cut at 16 inches long so we can actually set two containers side by side on this but what happens is over time they start to get compressed and splinter and they wick moisture and and we eventually have to throw these things out so same is going to go with your shipping container if you fill it full of contents uh, it's going to be similar weight to three containers on top of it and it's going to wick moisture in here especially from the ground uh, wreck your wooden blocking and it's also going to settle into the ground and that's a problem because if you have it up six inches off the ground and then it sinks back down to ground level, now you got that ground moisture problem again. And you also have a problem with rodents living underneath there if it's right down to the ground. So you want it high enough off the ground to get airflow under it, but also that a predator can get under it. So you want a cat or a fox or something to get under there to keep the skunks and the mice from living underneath your shipping container. So here is an example of this six by six block being compressed. But when you are up on six inch block here what you'd notice is the floor is another six inches up so you're going to be a 12 inch step getting into your container so if some people that have railway ties kicking around and they're 12 inches tall plus another six inches if it's 18 inches to get into your container you're gonna to have to build like a huge gravel ramp or something to get in there or have a step ladder or who knows what it's just not a good height and you don't want that for uh you're in and out especially if you're in it often you know multiple times a day so right here is the budget option we got the worst type of soil to set it on it's a sooty sandy clay type soil and your container guaranteed is going to sink in so you didn't do any prep work prior to us showing up but it's dry nice and hard and we can actually drive on this and then you got some old scrap six by sixes and some chunks of plywood so if you take your plywood and maybe even a bit bigger than this 24 by 24 or so set your block on there if this was the back end and that was I guess you deliver that side first if our driver tilted set it down on a set of these then when he gets to the end he can put it on the last set of blocking that's going to give you a bit of footprint to handle the lower the PSI lower the pressure to the earth and slow down the settling of it to make sure that your doors are nice and easy to open throughout the life of your container some people even put containers on concrete which seems expensive but for us in our new shop when we're working on shipping containers some of them are very heavy and there's not a lot of surface area on the underside of a corner casting that actually exerts pressure down onto our concrete slab we have a beautiful concrete slab in here and i want to protect it so container modification world has container pads that is a square foot 12 by 12 and it is seven times more surface area than the bottom of a corner casting so in our shop for containers especially ones that maybe we plan on leaving in here for a long time and are going to have a lot of weight in them like a tool crib we want to put them on top of and make sure there's no rocks under there <laughs> on top of these pads and boom so much more uh, surface area spreading that out on the concrete and then our concrete we know will not crack uh, for people that potentially want to utilize these in a parking lot say you're putting it on asphalt the sun can beat on the shipping container to make the container hot. You can beat on your asphalt, make your asphalt hot, and then you can actually stamp right into your asphalt the shape of this casting because this is 12 millimeters or a half inch lower than the actual, the rest of the container. And sometimes I've seen really bad cases where we lift up the asphalt when we come pick up a rental. So this is another good idea for asphalt parking lots. If you want to utilize these even in a compacted gravel slab, but you want to get additional airflow, then you can put, maybe not 16 inches long 12 inch long chunks of uh, treated pressure treated timber and then your container on top but now you see uh, the floor of the container is about inch and a half higher than that yet you're 13 14 inches into your container so uh, it's okay if you know you can build up your gravel a bit but it is getting up there so 
just on this alone, you should be an inch and a half up from the underside of your shipping container everywhere. That will breathe, but if you're allowing everything to settle over time and it's outside where ground moisture can come up into your container, you might want to get a bit of shims underneath this. I'd like to take a moment and give a big thank you to Ike here. They uh, sent us a K1 Pro fiber laser engraver and we actually tried it out with a prototype container pad here. So these we now have coming. Uh, they are gonna be available for sale for you guys to purchase. So just keep an eye out for them. But now that we were able to test out the laser engraver, all the units will be coming with our logo on there. And that means that you'll know whether you're getting the true OEM or you're getting a replica. Most containers we deliver aren't on a beautiful concrete slab like this. So if you're setting it down on sandy soil or topsoil, it is going to settle into the ground, especially after a full set of seasons. So as you go through the winter and the frost comes out of the ground, or if you get a lot of rain, maybe one side will settle more than the other. And then you're gonna notice that your doors are hard to open. So to fix that, typically, you just need to shim up one side or the other. And you can tell that by looking at the door seal where it normally rubs versus where it's sitting now. And when we say you need to level a container, we do not mean level, level, like a spirit level. We mean look at where it needs to be. Sometimes a container could have been tweaked in its life and so you actually don't want it level. So throw away your spirit level, use your brain, see how doors work, uh, jack up one side or the other. And when I say shim, I don't mean a uh, thousandth of an inch shim, like start with a inch and a half chunk of, of two by six or something, or three quarter inch plywood, half inch plywood, but don't be worrying about little wood shims that you shim a normal door frame with in your home. So here in Saskatchewan, we don't have much for uh, slope, let alone hills, but other places of the planet, uh, a lot of people have a lot of grade at their facility and a lot of people think, hey, I'm gonna get a couple loads of gravel and spread it nice and flat and then expect us to take our trailer and drive over that fresh unpacked gravel and our wheels just sink right in and we're stuck and then we need a tow truck to come dig us out. So it's better not to level off the area if you have a bit of slope. What you can do and what's really cool even about this, like in this situation we have a concrete pad so we could either put our container right up to it or even right on it. And so assume that's the front end of the container, which would be like that. And then we go to the back and I don't know if you can feel the slope that I'm on, but I'm getting lower and lower and lower and lower. And I'm pretty good at guessing 40 feet right around here, eight feet over. Oh, <laughs> and that right there. Now I probably need another block or two, but the whole container is gonna be sitting level. You're gonna have access to the doorway pretty much at ground height or just five inches up. And this end is gonna be 12 inches up. So you're gonna get lots of airflow underneath this thing, which is what we want. And our driver's not gonna have an issue backing up, tilting and driving away. I wanna drag this over to show you what a lot of people do. They'll buy eight foot long timbers like this and they'll lay them out every four feet and so you'll see, they'll have one on the end, one here, one here, one here, one here, one here. And then they expect our trailer to back up over railway ties or timbers, which is impossible. So our driver gets there, they'll have these like laser level and we'll have to kick them all out of the way. And they're really sad when we do that, but it's the only way for us to tilt and drive away. That is a no-no. Another thing when you put an eight foot timber under the end, it doesn't necessarily settle as easy and it's harder to shim. So if you cut this into four equal pieces and do one under each of the corners, it's easier later on to level out your can to make sure that your doors open and close properly. So there's so many times we get a phone call a year or two later. My doors don't work anymore. If they worked well when you got it and they don't now, it's because your container is settled into the ground. If this container was fully loaded, especially aluminum shipping containers. So containers that aren't a steel structural wall. If there's a bunch of weight here and this is not touching here, it means all the weights here, you can buckle a container. We do it, our yard is cambered. If we have an aluminum 53 and we set it in the peak or the crown of our yard, we buckle the side panels and completely total off an aluminum 53 foot shipping container. So you want all your blocking under the four corners. This is the only place that they touch on the ships. You can see daylight between every one of them. They stack them seven high on the ships, fully loaded. 
these posts are tested at the factory for like 196,000 kilograms or something crazy per corner to handle all that weight. They're very strong. The wall of a shipping container is like, think of it like an I-beam. It distributes all of the weight, all the load outwards. You don't need any blocking under your shipping container at all. Don't do it. It's actually a bad thing. Oh. <sighs>